Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off Gridways, a homestead in the desert. And we're just uh, coming into the garden house here. I'm gonna start here and uh, get this done with very quickly, because there's really not that much to, to say, except, hey, everything's growing just fine. Um, we're at a, having a wind, wind event today. There, I saw a gust up to 26 miles an hour so far. But uh, we'll, go, we'll get into that a little bit later. My pears are looking great. I got one there and one up on the top there. That's a first year tree and I got two nice pears off of it. And uh, my um, cherry tomatoes, I've got a couple of ripe ones on there. Lots of flowers and uh, looks healthy. Let's see if anything more comes off of it. My uh, peach tree is leaning over a little bit. I'm going to have to tie it up because the winds have been really gusting. Even my corn is bent over. Uh, we'll see. All right. So I got cucumbers got coming from everywhere. There's more here and there's another one. It looks like a ball there. Um, strange one. And uh, I'm going to get those pickled. I picked up, picked up some pickling spice today when I went to the market. And I uh, get some... Uh, dill pickles and some regular pickles, just regular pickles going. I'll probably do pickle slices and dill pickle spears. All right, so I'm going to walk through here very quickly. Uh, oh, I walked right past my watermelon. Um, that's hiding down underneath here. Yeah, he's a, he's a growing, so looking good. Looks like i got to tie up some more tomato plant down here. There are more cukes over here. These will be uh, dill spears. Got another one down here. And uh, got another one laying over there in the soil somewhere. But uh, I'm also got peppers like crazy. Jalapenos everywhere here. And uh, the red ones, oh my God, I had one, one of those last night with a uh, uh, sirloin steak. I, I did a six ounce sirloin. Oh my god. Well, actually I had two of those peppers and uh, lit up my life and uh, kept me awake. But yeah, there's probably, there's got to be 25, 30 peppers on that plant over there. I got some flowers coming out on those other pepper plants. So we're going to see what kind of peppers they actually are. I also have uh, some bell peppers popping out on this one plant here and uh, those are supposed to be red bell so I love uh, fire roasted red bell pepper so that'll be good I've still got some flowers on my uh, broccoli there so I got some young bro broccoli stems that'll make a meal and uh, the watermelon I'm not sure which one is carrying that fruit over there but there's I've seen a couple other small ones in here I'm gonna let that go for a while, see what happens with it. And uh, here's my uh, tangerine tree. Looking a little scrawny, but uh, I think it's got a good root set now, so it, it should make it through another year. And uh, more tomatoes coming up over here, more flowers. I went through it with my toothbrush and, uh, and uh, got a lot of it uh, done. So here's the, uh, the mild Chinese peppers. Uh, they're good green, but I like them when they turn red. They, and they're high in vi higher in vitamin C when they are red. And the corn. And more cucumbers down in here. So, yeah, I got cucumbers everywhere. All right. I got beets coming up in here now, too, next to Rosemary. She wanted company. I don't know why. Beats me. All right. Oh, yeah. There's the... Uh, the clone off of my cherry tomato plant and it's flowering already so I should get something off of there pepper plants looking healthy lots of onions coming up some more radishes some more beets and uh, my kale's starting to re-sprout on this carrot I can imagine what that looks like uh, that was from last year I just let it kept growing but it never went to seed yet but uh, that's okay the chickens will eat it. And uh, this was a, a real disappointment. This is my uh, yellow crookneck squash. And it always starts the little squash like that. 
but they never get much bigger than maybe a, a, a gherkin pi um, pickle, very small. And then they just dry up and, and die. So I'll have to see what I'm doing with that. I think they're just probably cramped in that little area. They need to get out for more sun. All right. So we got that done. We're going to stop at the electric house here because I do have to do a, a little special um, in today's video for Judith Ann. I did promise her that I would uh, uh, answer her question about roof coatings. So I'm going to be uh, moving on to that as soon as we go past the uh, electric room here. And since I sw switched back to the controllers there, um, much better control of my electricity, higher voltages showing, and I uh, got, got rid of those two cheapos. Uh, I put them back in boxes because I'm going to be returning those and demanding a refund because they sold me fault through false advertisement. If they don't want to, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll carry it all the way through with the Better Business Bureau and really raise a fuss. All right, so anyway, my batteries are really great. I mean, 13.4 and down here, they're showing at 13.3, 13.31, and uh, the winds are gusting up and down. Right now, I'm only doing about 21, 42 watts. But uh, yeah, I got 956 max watts out of it already. But uh, doing a good job. So last night, not even thinking, I closed everything up, closed up the containers, locked everything, got into bed, and uh, I kept lo looking over it. I've got a gauge inside that tells me what my battery is doing. I kept looking over and I'm saying, why are they down to like 12.3? That doesn't seem right. It should be higher than that. And uh, I just went to bed and said, well, I'll figure it out in the morning. Well, I did figure it out. But when I got up in the morning, it was down to 11.9. And I said, oh my God, what's that all about? Well, I had left three 100 watt bulbs burning inside the container. I forgot to shut the lights off before I locked it up last night. And since there's no windows in there, there's no way to see if lights are on when you walk past it in the dark. So, my goof, but uh, hey, with uh, running those three light bulbs, running two fridges, running my uh, lights inside the cabin, the lights inside the container, the TV running until about 11 p.m. last night, and the ceiling fan in the uh, kitchen area running until 11 p.m. last night. And then, you know, all the other flipping lights on and off and all of that. And it only went down to 11.9. Well, that's only one point below 12. So that's not bad. A heck of a draw on it all night long. And, uh, of course, the sun is going down earlier now. So, you know, I'm inside and... 6.30, 7 o'clock, it's, it's already dark out here. So that went, went all the way for 12 hours straight with all the excess running, and it only brought it down that far. Not bad. All right. Next, I got my downspout in, and let me zoom up there. And you can see it's uh, looking really good, so I'm ready for pipe on that at any time. And I'm going to be getting that in before uh, Thursday when the uh, weather is supposed to come here. And, uh, oh yeah, and, and uh, lately, well yesterday I got up and I mentioned that there was two wild dogs over there at the coyote feeder area. And uh, they were getting into whatever I put out for the coyotes or whatever was left over because the coyotes don't waste time getting it. But, you know, feeding them like that away from the, the cabin and the chickens, it keeps them away from the chickens. They've been working for three years. It keeps them happy. They know where to go and, go and eat and drink and move on. So they, they, they come back every night and check it out. And every night I try to leave some little tidbit behind for them so that uh, they, they get into a, a constant of just hanging around there. And they help with the rodent problems in the area because uh, they love the rodents. So whenever a, uh, um, 
a, a ground squirrel or anything like that is caught in a trap or whatever, it goes in the coyote feeder. It doesn't go to waste. So I'm just helping the uh, cycle of uh, uh, the way things go. I'm helping that move on a little bit better. All right. Now for rats, and uh, real quick here before we get into the roofing stuff, uh, for rats, somebody once asked me, I can't remember who it was, what I do to keep the rats out of uh, the engine compartments and stuff like that, like for my motorhome and all of that. Well, there is a mixture you can make up, and 